And welcome to the Daily Space Weather. Everything's all out of order today, so if I turn into a space weather rager, I apologize. There are the past 24 hours of the closest star, and uh, it's uh, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, you know, there's a CME on the way, and we've got coronal holes. There's a new sunspot that rose. The X-ray flux went up a little bit. Radio flux went up a little bit. Here's uh, the northern hemisphere. You might see some massive filaments up there like that one south of the earth scale we named that one the george soros filament and if you would like to name filaments after your friends your foes or even yourself join us over on twitter x.com slash smash mash and just follow the hashtag name that filament there are certainly a few to name many of which are currently visible in the northern polar region We'll also show that same region in SDO 304 angstroms, which isn't already on a loop because reasons. And there you may have seen a CME popping off there. A big plasma loop. Here it comes. And, and there it goes. Not here it comes. It's not headed toward Earth. But the one we showed yesterday was and still is headed toward Earth. And we have some disparities in the forecast. We have a lack of a forecast in some states. So let's move on. There's the George Soros filament, by the way, that giant absorption feature north of the coronal hole. So not to be confused with this, that's the coronal hole. This is the George Soros filament. And there is the new sunspot. It's not very large. It's prevented the sunspot number to, from dropping down below 30, I guess. As we have a bunch of setting sunspots in the west. So anyway, take a moment to press the like button if you enjoy the content. Help the channel remain existent, publicly visible, and free for all to view. Press the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Congratulations on realizing the most comprehensive daily space weather show in the known universe exists. We've also got, as you can see, the world's most comprehensive solar imagery. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's no market for it, huh? Who, who would have ever expected us to get to 500 followers on Twitter? So, yeah, I mean, whatever. By the way, we're considering giving out a prize for being our 500th Twitter follower. You'll just have to prove it. I don't know. Smash staff, let us know what you think about that. Maybe we should do some kind of a contest. Who can be our 500th Twitter follower, as if that's any kind of a freaking milestone? So anyway, press the like button. Otherwise, the video cannot continue. No, that's okay. We'll wait. Yeah, it's your fault. You haven't pressed like, therefore the video can't continue. And the following are paid endorsements. First of all, Dr. Squatch. Yeah, I like to use Dr. Squatch's pine tar soap. And you can buy some through our Amazon store. Yeah, amazon.com slash shop slash smash mash Again, I like the pine tar. And our bathroom smells like pine tar all, almost all the time. You can also find links to our hemp lucid shop below the video. And if you're in the market for some CBDs, mushroom gummies, immune stress and sleep stacks, body balms, lip balms, and more, even including CBD for your pets, don't forget to enter the promo code SMASHOMASH10 to save 10% on your checkout at hemplucid.com. Promo code SMASHOMASH10 to save as many percent. Another featured product is our most popular merch. Do not pull Vault to Caldera, folks. I know it might seem like bad times, but you know what? Our finest days lie ahead. So if you're going on a volcanic vacation, leave the vault pole at home. Don't pull Vault to Caldera. It could be unhealthful. Do visit the links below the video and help support the channel. That one features the YouTube URL as well as our homepage, smashomash.com. It is our top seller. And again, folks, if you're going through hell, keep going. But don't pole vault the caldera. And there are plenty to pole vault. And I mean active caldera to, to pole vault. And yeah, so uh, it's, that's a thing. And <clears throat> also, if you're into the channel, if you'd like to see additional content, consider becoming a member of the Smash Team at smashomash.com slash smash team. It's the official subscription services site of the Smash News Network. Least busted name and news. Got additional content. We uh, put up a post uh, just last night for only gold and silver Smash Team members. And by the way, thanks to the gold and silver Smash Team members, these videos are brought to you in part by them. They're providing some of the only 
incentive for us to keep these videos existent, remain publicly visible, and free for all to view. Smashomash.com slash smash team. You can find links at the homepage to all of that, social media, etc. Even Twitter, which some people refer to as X as if that's a brand, which it's not and never can be because it's a letter. But in any case, Smashomash.com, we launched a massive web ring in February of 2019 to benefit people like you, combat censorship and all the pathetic nonsense on the internet. Smashomash.com, the official homepage of the Smash News Network, least busted name and news, and here's some more solar stuff for you. There are the pa- that's yesterday plus today. That's November 16th and 17th to date in SDO Continuum. And as we forecasted yesterday, a further dip in sunspot number has occurred. There's the magnetogram for that same period of time, November 16th and 17th to date. Next, volcanoes. And it looks like the list is back up in full force now, and it's a long list, so let's blast through that. Of course, the Rakanes Peninsula has evacuated large entire cities, actually. An entire city has been evacuated on the Rakanes Peninsula. And, uh, yeah, so you'll hear a lot about that. The possibility of a new era of volcanic eruption is in the works for Iceland. Kluchevskoy also erupting, but no volcanic ash visible in satellite imagery. Shivaluch also not visible in imagery. Sakurajima, though, producing a 7,000-foot ash plume. Mount Mayan, producing an unknown volcanic ash plume. Luatolo, 6,000-foot ash plume. Semeru, 14,000-foot ash plume as it explodes. Tacono, 8,000-foot ash plume. Popocatépetl, 22,000-foot ash plume. Sancha Guido, not sure. Fuego exploding, flight level 160. It's a 16,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. Nevado del Ruiz, not sure on that one. Although, Purace, or Purace, I'm not sure. Purace, I'll say. Uh, Increased activity likely to continue there. Likely related to the release of gas, steam, and possibility some ash from the main crater. Uh, Despite the increased activity, alert level remains at yellow in Colombia for Purace. Sangay volcanic ash not observed. Same with Ravenador. Sab and Kaya producing 25,000 foot plume of volcanic ash as it explodes in Peru. It's a flight level 250 over the Peruvian volcano. We did have one large quake in the past 24 hours. And before we talk about that, Iceland is still quiet. No eruptions. And by the way, that is where the action has been. The Rakanes Peninsula. So, and there are the most recent quakes. And let's move on to quakes. Not worry about Grimsvitten. Grimsvitten. Next, moving on to earthquakes. So, earthquakes. Yeah, those are a thing. And we did have a 6.7. There are the past 90 days. And here is the info about the most recent quake. The largest quake of the past 24 hours was this 6.7 at the Philippines. And it was at some considerable depth there. No tsunami reported about that. That's where it happened, just south of General Santos City. And I'm back. So, yeah, there's the the quake scenario, a 6.7. There was no tsunami watch, warning, advisory, or threat from that. It was too deep of a quake, nearly 80 kilometers. And no reports of tsunamis and no surprise there. These are the quakes of the past 24 hours at a 5 or greater magnitude. Myanmar had a 5.7. That was at 1.37 universal time this morning. Then Indonesia had a 5.3 at 3.02. And then, wham, a 6.7 at the Philippines. 78 kilometers estimated depth at 8.14 universal time this morning. We did not send out an email alert about that, but we have the capability. And that's it. Those are the quakes of a five or greater magnitude. Next, let's get back to space. And we do have some coronal holes. We'll talk about that more in a minute. First, some more stats. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux is now at... 120 solar flux units. So a little increase in the radio flux. Uh, There's the one-year graph of it from Solon.info. It's represented by the black line. The red line is a sunspot number, which you can see there dipping below 30. And the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard here expecting some geomagnetic unrest to begin late on the 19th. So pretty sure that's 
excuse me, pretty sure that sounds like our forecast from yesterday. And let's take a look at some models. So first of all, we'll show the NOAA Enlil spiral. There's NOAA's forecast. And strangely, the Enlil spiral does not agree with NOAA's actual forecast on the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. So that's forecasting it. Well, it's early in the day on the 20th, late on the 19th. It's pretty close, I guess. So that's NOAA's forecast. And as far as NASA's forecast, NASA has not modeled that yet. So it's we don't see any CME impact forecasted by NASA. Expect that in the coming day or so. I don't, I don't know what's taking so long. Don't you have people in space, NASA? Next, the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space. So we did have a brief period of a little geomagnetic uptick. We'll tell you why momentarily. But that's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space there. Pretty geomagnetically calm. And here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. And similarly calm. Keep in mind this data is the same model. It's just showing different effects of space weather. The ground magnetic perturbations map depicts Earth's B field, changes to Earth's B field in nanotesla magnetic flux density, geospace delta B changes to Earth's B field. Planetary K index currently at <clears throat> 1.33. KP 1.33 is the current situation. And the real time solar wind there, we had a little CME impact. So right in here. We had a little bit of a magnetic field fluctuation, barely even a glancing blow there. Little bit of activity there, not enough to produce much of anything. So that's the data from ACE. I think Discover shows it a little bit better. So here you'll see this magnetic field change a little bit. And then you'll see more significant changes here, a signal in the plasma temperature also the density and velocity. Current conditions are about one and a half protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density. Solar wind velocity here about 413 kilometers per second. Goes magnetometers here pretty smooth. Little higher lows and lower highs for the pat than the past two days. And next moving to the top view ecliptic <laughs> the top view ecliptic plane field plot. That's what it is. And Earth has recently snapped into a South Pole current sheet right as we premiered last night's video. So there's the latest image. Earth is in a little eeny an eensy weensy South Pole current sheet there. So that should last that could last less than 12 hours, but at the moment it looks like it's going to last about another day or so. So there's the that's the sector boundary crossing scenario. Here's our line of sight field plot depicting the solar B field in blue, polar fields in green and red for north and south, and the photosphere magnetism in grayscale. Not to be confused with Castle Grayskull, the abode of Skeletor. Next our line of sight ecliptic plane field plot. <clears throat> there you go. That's what's happening. And next, our line of sight coronal hole plot. So we still do have some magnetic indecision here moving right into the Earth facing portion of the solar disk. It's slightly to the east of the Earth facing portion right now, but there is a little magnetic indecision. So that could suddenly change the sector boundary crossing scenario. Keep in mind, folks, the magnetic environment in a star can change with basically no warning. <clears throat> if you get any, it'll probably be from our channel. So anyway, that's coronal holes, and let's get back to coronal holes. So there is a, a zoomed in view, and let's get real close. There's the most well-defined one there, moving sort of into the Earth-facing zone there. That could cause a small uptick in solar activity. 
Uh, we don't expect a very long duration space weather event from that one, though. It's probably something like three or more days out. So it could affect the incoming coronal hole. I mean, the incoming coronal mass ejection. We'll just have to see what happens. It all depends on things like magnetic field intensity, vertical components, plasma speed, and plasma density especially. So pretty good view there of that coronal hole regardless. And let's move on to sunspots next. Sunspots. Yes, people count them. People get mad about them. Every new sunspot, some people, if they're in a cult, they go, oh, no, uh, let's don't count that sunspot. It makes me look like I'm incorrect with my ridiculous solar forecasts of certain events that are not occurring. Um, anyway, the number is uh, currently only at about 38. 38 sunspots, it looks like, we've got from the from the Belgian, the Belgian Royal Observatory, otherwise known as the ROB, the Royal Observatory of Belgium. And moving on to our flare monitor and flare probability scoreboard. So sunspot 3488 is barely a sunspot, if at all. Uh, we're going to have another dip in sunspot number. We may get all the way down to about 20 sunspots by tomorrow. That's my forecast. Forecast is for 24 sunspots by tomorrow. And here comes the SDO continuum. Here's a 24 hour video for you. <clears throat> and aren't you happy you've nearly survived another week? Next, we'll look at solar energy. <sighs> Next, we'll look at solar energetic particles and solar flares. And uh, no spikes in the proton flux, so no solar energetic particles to mention. And as far as flares, we have seen the flare profile come up. The background X-ray flux is now at about C1.27, so that's interesting. Uh, it looks like maybe that new sunspot is going to uh, be a producer of solar flares. We'll have to see what happens. And let's see what's happening from SDO's 94 angstrom wavelength. What happened? Where am I? Oh my god. Dear god, what has happened? There's a 24-hour video from SDO featuring 131 angstroms. So yeah, that's a thing. It looks like the brightest area is indeed the southeastern limb. So new active region is rising in the northeast as well. So little uptick there in some ways. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's bunker time. Let, let us know in the comments if, if, you're, if you're viewing this video from your bunker. Next, what's going on overhead is we've got a lovely crescent moon out there. I saw it just as the sun was setting. And we've also got Jupiter and Saturn visible on the ecliptic over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, our location. This star chart is located at skyandtelescope.org. Next, a solar system forecast. What, you want to know where planets are going to be, right? So that's where they are today. That's where they'll be next Friday. We will have a gibbous waning. I'm sorry, we'll have a gibbous waxing moon. <coughs> gibbous waxing. I don't care. And next, let's get to our astronomy photo of the day. So here's our astronomy photo of the day, which looks very green. Why? Because somebody turned up the saturation massively to accentuate the aurora. It's over Greenland, I might add. apod.nasa.gov is where to find that image if you'd like to make that your desktop background, perhaps. So that's what's that's what was going on at some point. I don't know when it was taken. I don't really even care in the slightest. But there you go. Great Aurora there over Greenland. Dag. Check out those purple and green. Purple, green, pink. Some whitish Aurora in there. 
So that's what's up, apod.nasa.gov. If you want to check it out yourself, feel free. And next, let's move to coronal mass ejections. So there are some. I mean, they popped off this morning. Let's take a little closer look here. We'll let those play through. So the C2 on the left is a little bit ahead of the C3 on the right. There is an event out of the southeast. That was early in the morning. And then we'll have an event out of the north. Looks like the west and the north. Well, maybe two events going on there at the same time out of the west and north. So anyway, that's what's going on. Let's look at stereo A as well to give us a little additional insight into the CME situation. Now we've got the raw data on the left slightly ahead of the difference imagery on the right. So so far from what I'm seeing, I'm not anticipating those to be Earth-directed coronal mass ejections. I did watch them on the GOES-16 as they occurred. So there's the one out of the southeast. Then you see some ejecta out of the east and out of the north. Or will you? I don't know. Huh. Doesn't look earthly directed. Let us know in the comments if you agree, disagree, or are indifferent. Next, let's take a look at some custom coronagraphs. Yeah, custom coronagraphs. That's a 24-hour video straight from helioviewer.org. And again, we don't anticipate those to be earthly directed. We anticipate those plasma movements to have originated on the far side of the sun somewhat. So they're off to the north and to the east, not toward Earth. And let's move on to filaments. Yeah, filaments. Check out the George Soros filament. It is large, and it could become in charge if it decides to end civilization. So there you go. That's the George Soros filament. You could have named it by following the hashtag name that filament. Just type in the hashtag name that filament over on X, the platform formerly regarded as a brand, Twitter. And thanks to our new followers over there. Again, we are considering the possibility of creating a prize for our 500th Twitter follower, just basically to mock Twitter and the pathetic censorship on all social media. I mean, I don't know, maybe we should make some new merch specifically about how pathetic the censorship is on the Internet. I don't know. You know, a lot of people used to think it was un-American to silence the speech of Americans. And by the way, freedom of speech absolutely means freedom of reach. What are you talking about? Anyway, x.com slash smash mash if you want to name filaments after your friends, your foes, or even yourself. Okay. Okay. Next, filaments. And there you go. There's the filament situation. I named one. The rest of them are up to you. Period. Here's grayscale imagery. It also shows prominences. Again, a new active region likely rising in the northeast. And before we get the bonus features... Let's take a look at the latest couple of hours, three hours or so on the GOES-18 SUVI now, as opposed to the GOES-16, which we're reviewing more recently, less recently, at some other time, at whatever, whatever time. There you go. Congratulations. Next bonus features. And our first bonus feature is satellite charging. We ain't got none. It's smooth sailing. No high energy electrons or low energy electrons affecting satellites, at least not geosynchronous near equatorial satellites. Goes electron flux is in a normal operating range. It's pretty unremarkable. 
relativistic electrons there over the past year, there is the contextualization of the electron flux. There's the forecast model. NOAA's expecting flat levels. I would say sometime late in the day, you can expect to see the electron flux crash as a CME impact is going to arrive. We talked about it yesterday, <clears throat> only a few hours after it occurred. Next, the ionosphere. And I guess I'll switch back to the full view. Are you worthy of the full screen view? There you go. The ionosphere. Feel, feel free to pause the video on this frame if you don't know the atmospheric layers and the electromagnetic radiation penetration and chemical concentration. Here's the ionosphere. Hopefully that doesn't frighten you, but if that sent you into a bunker, make sure you let us know in the comments. Oh no, some idiot on the internet told you the poles are going to flip in like five years because reasons. Cosmic ray flux is going to mysteriously keep increasing, even though it's at the lowest levels for nearly 20 years. There's the ionosphere. Here's the anomaly gram. It depicts anomaly from the 30-day median. Let us know in the comments if the ionosphere has been making you mad. What's that? Too much geomagnetic activity? Cosmic ray flux is too low for your ridiculous agenda and cult? Terribly sorry. Terribly sorry. Terribly sorry, governor. Terribly sorry. My favorite part of any cult story is the part where the cult evaporates. Here comes the latest image. It's from 2315 Universal Time. There you go. Great view of the South Atlantic anomaly there, right over the South American continent where it's been for an extended period. We'll also show the WAM, the whole atmosphere model. It's the global ionosphere now cast, depicting total electron content and maximum usable frequency. Don't like it? Fast forward to a different part of the video. It's a global snapshot for GPS and radio users. Next total electron content by itself. And this global view looks like crap for weeks. I don't like it. It looks erroneous. It looks like a pile of garbage. It looks like a pile of garbage and dog crap. Like the code written by Google, Facebook, Apple, and Twitter. Here's the electron content anomaly over North America. That's anomaly from the 10 day average. And I'm over it. Here's the latest intensity gram and the latest colorized magnetogram. Could you refresh any more slowly, please? Thank you. So here's this new sunspot. It is, yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty impressive. It is certainly beta gamma class. Looks like a new sunspot may be, fo oh, uh, may be forming in here as well. See that? Check it out. So, yeah. Anyway, certainly beta gamma class. Is it beta gamma delta? I think it's too early to tell. Let's take a look at, is there a new sunspot showing up up here yet? No, there's not. Do we see a new active region rising? Yes, we do. There's a North Pole field showing up, as you would expect from a new sunspot rising. Anyway, there's the full disk. And let's move to meteorology. Once again, don't forget to press the like button. Otherwise, we will confiscate your souls, cast it into an ever deepening and dark darkening abyss by trapping it inside of a demonic amulet and then... Um, Wearing it as a necklace for a thousand years. A thousand years. Anyway, looking at mean sea level pressure here, here's the planetary view. Check it out. We got an anti cyclone in the North Atlantic. That is a high pressure zone. You can see a bit of a clockwise rotation there, as you would expect with an anti cyclone. We're seeing a strong low forming off the coast of South Carolina, as we forecasted yesterday. So here are the rest of the planet's pressures. It's depicting surface winds and mean sea level pressure. And the meanest pressure 
It is currently in the Southern Ocean here, south of Australia. I think that's the world's lowest pressure, 963 hectopascals. So, yep, that's what's going on. And here come winds. Surface winds, shown here. Jet streams, shown there. Jet streams of the central world. Surface winds. Your soul. Oh, wait, no, that's surface winds once again for the western world. And then here is the river sticks. I mean, uh, the jet streams of the western world. Next, clouds and fog. As clouds rapidly nucleate once again as sun sets over South America. And what do I see there? Is that the shadow of a UFO? Check it out. Right there. Look at that huge shadow. Dag, what is that? Let's take a closer look. All right, so here we've zoomed in. And there you can see that shadow. Sup with that. There it goes. What's casting that shadow, folks? What's casting that shadow? Hopefully it's not casting your soul into the river sticks. By the way, here's that low that's been forming off of the coast of South Carolina or Georgia or whatever. There it is. And it's going to be sweeping up the eastern coast, moving into the North Atlantic, creating some high winds and some good surf for all of you autumn East Coast surfers. Moving on to our new snow map. So here's new snow for the next three days on the Euro model. Quite a bit of snow coming to the U.S. in the next three days. There's the GFS model. A little bit different, showing much heavier snows in Oregon. Again, there's the Euro model. And there is the GFS. Moving right along to our weather.gov map. Weather.gov is to where to get your weather warnings. Weather.gov, the National Weather Service homepage. There's the key. There's the map. Here's the forecast. Pressure and precipitation first on the, on the GFS 72-hour model. Next, total accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. Quite a bit of snow there coming in the next three days. And all that hot air from Colorado will be insufficient to prevent a lot of snow from falling. And there is an awful lot of hot air coming out of that cult breeding ground of Colorado. How bizarre. How bizarre. Next, total accumulated precipitation, as in all of it, including rain and snow, that is in inches, by the way. It's a 72-hour GFS model. And temperature anomaly is where we'll close out our forecasting. Those are all from Tropical Tidbits. 72-hour GFS temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Next lightning. That's the past, I don't know, 10 hours, something. That's where the lightning strikes have been. Let's see the, where the lightning strikes are. There's a real-time lightning map from lightningmaps.org. The Atlantic Ocean has some lightning. Also Italy. Also the Eastern Mediterranean. We'll close out with Doppler radar. Clouds and fog. And water vapor. So there's the, water, there's the Doppler map. Here is the lower 48. We showed you the full 50 state. This is the lower 48. Is that the right zoom? That's the right zoom. Here's clouds and fog. And there is water vapor. Here's a recap because it is so time to end this video. US Doppler radar, clouds and fog, and the water vapor should clear up your Doppler if it's unclear. 
and I've got to head back to the bunker, folks. I'm in a big hurry to head back to the bunker because I'm spooked of all of this space. Oh, no, the galaxy, the sun, space is so spooky, I'm spooked. So anyway, I'm headed back to the bunker again. I heard a bird, a bird, a bird, a bird has encouraged me to climb in. Ha, <laughs>